Ancient Greece was a real golden age in the history of the world, but what were the origins of ancient Greece and what was the genetic makeup of this civilization? Now let's start by getting a quick overview of ancient Greece itself. Well, the civilization emerged between the 12th and 9th centuries BC, with city-states rising out of the ashes of the Greek Dark Age after the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization, something we are going to go into in more detail later. The epic poems written by Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey are generally dated to the 8th century BC and were an early contribution from the ancient Greeks. One date for the end of ancient Greek civilization was when Alexander the Great died in 323 BC. However, some argue it ended much later than this in the 5th century AD at the end of classical antiquity with the fall of the Western Roman Empire. We obviously know that ancient Greek civilization had a major impact on ancient Rome. Regardless of the precise end date, it was the time around the classical period in ancient Greece that is the most famous and is the one that produced the most revolutionary art and ideas. Classical Greece was a period of around 200 years through the 5th and 4th centuries BC, which saw the peak flourishing of democratic Athens, the Peloponnesian War fought between the forces of Athens and Sparta, the Spartan and Theban hegemonies, and the expansion of Macedonia under Philip II, which was then built upon by his son, Alexander the Great. This period was also the time of the great philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, as well as the great historians such as Herodotus who divided the Greeks into four major tribes, the Achaeans, the Aeolians, the Ionians and the Dorians. Another Greek historian was Thucydides, who is famous for the Thucydides trap, the dynamic of a rising power challenging an existing power, something that has been applied to the current US-China dynamic. I should note as well that ancient Greece, for most of its existence, was more a group of different city-states that had some shared cultural and linguistic features as opposed to a fully unified empire like the Roman Empire. But most of ancient Greece was briefly unified for 13 years under Alexander the Great's empire. Now what about the origins of ancient Greece? Well the answer is found in the incredible Bronze Age civilizations in this part of the world, the Mycenaean and Minoan civilizations. Let's start with the older one, the Minoans. Well the first thing to note about the Minoans is they're known for their beautiful frescoes. This is the bull leaping fresco that was found on the east wall of a Minoan palace at Knossos in Crete. It is about 3,500 years old, but I still want it on my wall. Maybe one day, eh? Anyway, the Minoan civilization in general was a Bronze Age culture which was centered on the island of Crete, and it is dated from around 3000 to 1100 BC. It is considered Europe's first literate civilization, and it has been described as Europe's first major experience of civilization. The term Minoan is a modern one and comes from the name of the mythical king Minos, the king of Crete in Greek mythology. The Minoans developed two writing systems that are somewhat mysterious. Known as Cretan hieroglyphs in Linear A, neither have been fully deciphered. A modified version of Linear A, known as Linear B, was used to write Mycenaean Greek, and this is better understood as it was deciphered in 1952. And it was around the time Linear B started being used that the Minoan civilization declined, coming increasingly under the influence of the mainland Mycenaean Greeks, initially forming a hybrid culture before being absorbed by the Mycenaeans. The Mycenaean civilization is another important part in the origins of ancient Greeks, however. It arose around 1750 BC on mainland Greece, with Mycenae being an important site, with other important sites including Athens. The Linear B script offers the first written records of the Greek language, and the religion already included several deities that can also be found in the Olympic pantheon. Elite families were also buried in shaft graves. Now, the Mycenaean civilization declined from around 1200 BC during the broader period known as the Late Bronze Age Collapse, a period where different Mediterranean powers were essentially weakened or collapsed themselves. There are various different theories that try and explain this collapse, some to do with a natural disaster. Others are connected to attacks from the Sea Peoples, something that sounds like it should be in Game of Thrones. But this was a somewhat unknown group of tribes thought to have also attacked Egypt and other Mediterranean regions around 1200 BC during the Late Bronze Age. Regardless of the precise reasons as to why the Mycenaean civilization collapsed, the following period was a period of darkness and a period of fragmentation. This lasted for a few hundred years, and then we saw the, the rise of archaic Greece around 800 BC. When Greeks started to settle across the Mediterranean and establish wide trading networks again, these archaic Greeks were aware of this Mycenaean civilization, however, and there was connections between them, sharing names of gods they worshipped, for instance. 
So the Mycenaean and Minoan civilizations were very important in the origin story of ancient Greece. But what about the genetics of ancient Greece and how does this relate to their origin story? Well, a really interesting paper from 2017 published in Nature looked at the genetic origins of the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. By using genome data from 19 ancient individuals, they found that Minoans and Mycenaeans were genetically similar, having at least three quarters of their ancestry from the first Neolithic farmers of western Anatolia and the Aegean area. Most of the remainder of both their ancestries were from ancient populations related to those of the Caucasus and Iran. This study couldn't pinpoint exactly who these people were and when they moved into ancient Greece, but noted it may be related to Bronze Age pastoralists from the Eurasian steppe who migrated into Europe. Although in general, it seems that migrations from the Pontic Caspian steppe had less of an impact on Southeast Europe than other parts of the continent. Some people online also seem to speculate it may have had something to do with the neighbouring Hittites of Anatolia, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence of this, for now at least. This introduction of Eastern and DNA was also seen when the authors of this 2017 study looked at the Y-DNA haplogroups as well. Haplogroup G2 was dominant in Neolithic men of Greece, but during the Bronze Age, haplogroup J was introduced. With 4 out of 5 males belonging to the Minoans, the Mycenaeans, and southwestern Anatolians belonging to haplogroup J. Whereas before the Bronze Age, this was almost non-existent. Jai is still a very common haplogroup in Greece today. Given this genetic similarity, it will come as no surprise that the Mycenaeans and the Minoans would have looked quite alike, with both carrying genes for brown hair and brown eyes. The Mycenaeans were slightly different genetically to the Minoans, however. The Mycenaeans had approximately 4-16% ancestry from a northern source related to hunter-gatherers of Eastern Europe and Siberia, a sort of ancient North Eurasian component. The authors again were not entirely sure who brought this ancestry in, and when. It could have been related to a population movement from around Armenia and the Caucasus, but it may also be related to additional admixing with Bronze Age steppe populations that didn't affect the Minoans for much of their civilization, given that they lived on an island. Another study from 2022 published in Science that looked at the genetic history of the Southern Ark added to our understanding of this. They confirmed this picture of a slight genetic difference between the two civilizations, finding that Eastern hunter-gatherer type ancestry was around 4% in Mycenaean Greece, but negligible in Minoan Crete. The results of this study also indicated that migrations from the Yamnaya culture of the Pontic Caspian steppe that began around 3000 BC reached Greece about 1500 to 1000 BC potentially being the source of bringing this ancestry into mainland Greece. After all, we know that the genetics of the Yamnaya culture itself was largely a mix of Eastern hunter-gatherer ancestry who were closely related to people from Siberia, and a population of Caucasus hunter-gatherers who moved north into the steppe. And in fact, this 2022 study again detailed this movement from the Caucasus and also the interaction between the Caucasus and the steppe. They note that between 5000 and 3000 BC, there was a movement of people from around Armenia into the steppe, as shown by this blue arrow in the diagram. The Yamnaya then moved back down into this area around Armenia beginning around 3000 BC, so there was lots of mixing between these areas at various points. A more recent study from 2023 confirmed this general picture by analysing 102 ancient individuals from Crete, the Greek mainland and the Aegean Islands. This study, however, did find that this additional Eastern hunter-gatherer-like ancestry did actually reach Crete, but gradually between the 17th to the 12th centuries BC at the end of the Minoan period. This would make sense as the mainland Mycenaeans were increasingly interacting with the Minoans at the tail end of this civilization. So as far as the genetic makeup of ancient Greece, it would be very similar to the Mycenaeans i.e. a high percentage of early Neolithic farmer ancestry, with a reasonable amount of this Eastern ancestry from around the Caucasus and Iran, and then a small additional ancestry related to the hunter-gatherers of Eastern Europe and Siberia. There may also have been some further admixture during the classical period in ancient Greece, given their trading routes and their kind of connections across the Mediterranean, but this didn't seem to alter the genetics that much at all. In fact, there is a genetic overlap between modern Greeks and the Mycenaeans, although there is some further admixture of modern Greeks. But still, there has been a pretty remarkable genetic continuity in Greece for over 3,000 years since the Mycenaean civilization. But what is the genetic history of an island just west of Greece who also traded with the Mycenaeans at different points? Sardinia. To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.